Hello, everyone. In today's tutorial, we're going to cover streams specifically related to Java 17. This is the latest uh, long-term support version. Uh, <clears throat> so let's dive into it. What are streams? Well, we are all aware of what streams are, as you can see here, right? Stream, normally what we associate with is water flowing through some path, right? So it's something which is continuously flowing, flowing, flowing. Well, streams in Java, since it's computer science and there is no water, what flows? Computer science has what? Computers have what? Data. So streams allows you to process data, okay? What is flowing through the streams is stream of data. They were introduced as a part or as a new feature since Java 8. Okay. See, one very important thing to note is stream themselves do not store data. They are not data structure. They are not storage, like how collections like array list or link list or queue. Streams do not store data in them. They just process the data. It's just flows. Like how streams of water is not the source of water. Water is coming from somewhere else, right? And it's passing through the stream and ultimately it merges into the ocean. Here, what will happen is in Java or in computer science streams, there will be some source which contains the data. Uh, we'll see a little later how we can create the streams or how we can generate the source of data for streams. It will have different functions, which is optional to process on the data. And then ultimately it creates the output, which is the terminal operation, which is mandatory, okay, on the stream in order to close the stream. So let's dive into details. They were introduced, as we said, in Java 8. They have been around since Java 8, and it has a number of advantages over traditional collection met processing methods. So like, say, for example, we had for loops uh, for if we had an arrays, if we have to process arrays, we had to write, write something such as for int i equal to zero. So say, for example, here we were writing for int <clears throat> i equal to zero, i less than whatever your array dot size, and then you had i plus plus, and then you were having, uh, what do you call, here you would have to have say, array dot get, and then you say i, right? Or you used iterators to go over collection streams, uh, collections, right? This is much more concise. The methods in stream makes processing elements much more concise. The code looks much more neater, better to understand. Okay, seems can be, oh, uh, there is another advantage that streams can be executed in parallel. There are parallel streams, okay, which can be extremely uh, important to boost performance for larger collections. Simplicity are easier to read and write than the traditional uh, collection processing code, which we'll be seeing pretty soon, okay? Streams pipelines typically consist of a source stream, like somewhere the source is coming, like say, for example, this, all the uh, source, the water coming from the mountains, followed by zero or more intermediate operations. As I said, intermediate operations are optional, and a terminal operation. A terminal operation is mandatory. Uh, we'll see what it is. So here is an example. Sorry. See here, you have a stream maker, something that will generate stream of data. Data will process. So say, for example, filter out the ones which are red. We do not want the ones which are red. So these will go process you will see only this uh, light yellow and green. Then another function, and they will all be written in form of lambda expressions. So convert the triangle into 
uh, convert the circles into triangles. So again, some operation on the data. Filter out the small ones. Again, remove the small ones only left and then sum up all the circumferences. And then the total is 20, which will be assigned to a variable. Okay, so this is how it is. Now again, all filter, make them something, filter are all intermediate operations. Summing up is a terminal operation. Okay, so this is how generally, visually, you can visualize a stream. Okay, now again, these are optional. You can have zero or as many as you want, but this is mandatory and the source is mandatory. Now, let's see how are streams different from collections, like how are streams different from hash map, how are streams different from array list, they are all collections, right? What are streams? So as I said just a little while ago, it's not a data structure. It does not store data in it, okay? It's, and all it does, it, it lets the data flow through it, okay? Changing it in a way we define or the lambda expressions define from source data structure okay and a generator functions somewhere is the source we'll see just a little later the different ways in which streams can be created streams are functional in nature an operation on a stream produces a result but does not modify the source okay see here all these are coming. The source is still there. Like this data structure, whichever contained these uh, circles, is still there. It comes here, it does some operation, creates a new stream. Does some operation, creates a new stream. Does some operation, creates a new stream. Ultimately, the terminal operation, the result of the terminal operation is assigned to a new object or to a new variable. But the source here, whatever the source was, remain as it is. Okay. So, for example, filtering a stream obtained from a collection produces a new stream without the filtered elements. Okay. And it's a new stream. <clears throat> Laziness seeking. And this is very important. Many stream operations such as filtering, mapping, or duplicate removal can be implemented lazily, okay. exposing the op opportunities for optimization. What does this mean is that whatever your the steps you have defined, they are not invoked when you write it. It's only invoked after it reaches the, the processing reaches the terminal operations. It can decide what all you want from the stream, thus optimizing it. It's called lazy invocation. So stream operations are divided into intermediate operations and terminal operations. Intermediate operations are always lazy, invoked only when it is necessary. Another feature or another difference is possibly unbounded because all their job is to let the data flow. So while connect collections have a finite size, they have limit, streams need not have it because as big as a uh, collection, the data can flow through it. Stream has some methods such as limit or find first or find last, okay, which can help us to complete larger collections in finite time. Another difference is it's consumable. What does it mean? The elements of the stream. Now, this is again very important to keep in mind that elements of a stream are visited only once during the entire life of the stream. So if you want to process the same element again, you have to define a new stream. You have to create a new stream. Any element that flows through the stream is visited only once. This is very important to know. So again, once again, just a small recap. How is it different? 
streams do not store data in them. They process the data, but do not store it. They are functional in nature, right? They just operate on data and produce a new stream. And then finally, the terminal operation produces the end result without modifying the source. There is no side effect of modifying the source. There is lazy invocation of all the intermediate operations. They are invoked only when the processing reaches the terminal and then it decides what's the best way to uh, invoke the intermediate operations. Unbounded, which means that unlike collections which have a size, streams do not have a size. Again, it makes sense, right? Because it, you don't store something. So why do you define a size? Consumable, very important. Any element that flows through the stream is visited only once. Now, let's see how we can create streams. Again, from a collection, using the stream method, parallel stream methods. <clears throat> from an array, using arrays.stream, uh, within parentheses, the um, array object. <clears throat> Static methods like stream off, in stream dot range, stream dot iterate. You can also create a stream from reader buffered reader dot lines. It creates a stream of lines when you when you're taking input. If you're reading files, it can be getting. Uh, you can generate a stream from files. You can generate a stream of random numbers using this method, random.ints. Then numerous um, primitive data type streams are there, like bits, bit set dot stream, pattern dot split dot stream, lot of streams. Let's see some examples, how you, how you can collect, how you can create a stream from collections. So for example, this is a um, array of names. You create a stream like from list dot stream method. Okay, this is how you create it from collection. So whether it's hash map or a hash table, any collection will have stream object, uh, stream method in it to give us the stream from an array. So for example, this is a string array. So arrays dot stream and inside it, the array, array object. From a builder, there is a stream builder dot add, and then you keep on adding, and then you get a name stream. So this can be pushed down here. So this is the code from a builder, build, add, and then dot build. And again, then once you have the name stream, you can apply the intermediate operations, and then the finally, a terminal operation from a generator method. So stream.generate. And this is the lambda i plus any random math number. So you have a number stream. Primitive streams, like you have int stream, you have double stream, you have a lot of streams method. So from the range 1 to 101. So this stream will process the numbers from 1 to 101 from a string. So it's a regular string. <clears throat> You're defining a string instead of an array. And then you have a character stream here because stream, stream has cats method. Reading the files, each line, it's a txt file. You can process it as a stream. Again, it's a txt file to so every line is a string. So it's a stream of strings using the static stream dot off method. So for example, the double stream, you can create a stream off, pass in a set of doubles. So you have range, you have stream off, multiple ways. So here is one example, small example, which shows you how to process the stream. Again, this is just an intro. 
we'll be going in detail with every intermediate operations. Okay, not in today's lecture, but in the next lecture, but we'll be going in, in detail. This is just to give you a feel of how to process. So first, you're processing the names. You have an array, a list of names. You get the stream. You get the filter, the name that starts with A. So any data which is flowing through the stream matches this condition, which means the value of this Boolean expression is true. Only those will be passed on to the next stream or rather the stream, the following stream will contain only those elements which match this condition. And then finally, the collect is a terminal method. You collect it and put it into a string. And then this is just a printout, okay? Now this, each one line is separated to make it more clear. In reality or in actual programming, everything is written in one line. So this is like filtered names is equal to you create arrays dot as list, call the stream method to generate the stream. Again, one of the <clears throat> intermediate operations, name starts with A, it could be anything. This is just an example. So only those names which start with A will flow and go into this collect method. So the output of this list, this filtered names, will only contain Alice because only this name, this string starts with an A, all right? So this is just a brief intro on streams. Listen to the lecture one more time so that you can have the concept clear. And then in the next lecture, we'll visit various intermediate operations that you can do or various operations that you can do on the data that is flowing to the stream. All right. Thank you for listening. See you all again in the next lecture. Bye.